Unless one has an affinity for looking ridiculously foolish, it is wise not to stumble aimlessly into a fantasy football draft. The Ultimate Draft Kit from the Fantasy Footballers contains all the information you need to avoid the jeers of your enemies and to snuff out any glint of hope in their souls. Imagine the gasps those trouser-wearing turnips will emit as you make yet another triumphant draft selection. Imagine their tears forming a formidable puddle as you assemble an unstoppable force. The ultimate draft kit comes bursting at the seams with fantasy goodness. When you enter the draft room, you'll feel as if you were a monstrous beast let loose in a chicken coop. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you are nasty, I am your host. With the most, of course, for today, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright. Welcome into the podcast. This is quite possibly the strangest recording of this show that we have ever had. As you uh, <laughs> have noticed, I am hosting, which means that Andy Holloway, our fearless captain, is out for the day. Uh, his wife was uh, came down with some migraine stuff. And at these times, kids are at home. That means homeschooling needs to be done, so Andy is Papa Bear at home right now. Jason, on the other hand, he had to take care of uh, another family member's kids, so we are being as cautious as we can with everything that's going on. So he's at home. So I'm I'm at home. I'm at the table all by myself in the studio. Jason Moore, welcome to the show. Welcome to the weirdness. You know, it's been weird even from my side. But I did not really make the connection that you are literally at the Fantasy Footballers studio set table by yourself for the first time ever that one person has sat yes. there for a main show. I'm uh, I'm glad I'm not you, but at least you've got you've got the you got Brooks, you've got Jeremy, you got you got the producers extraordinaire. Look, I've got the support over here that I need. So everything will be 100 on this episode. I'm just letting everyone know that I'm freaking out. And it's really really bizarre. You heard our uh, great friend of the show, David Attenborough, great friend of the show, <laughs> uh letting everybody know about the ultimate draft kit. This thing is getting updated. Look, you're going to be drafting soon. Like a beast, <laughs> the chicken coop. UltimateDraftKit.com, and do not forget, a dollar from every UDK goes to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Jason, we're going to get right into the quick question. Over the weekend, there was a signing, and <gasps> this signing went to the Las Vegas Raiders. Pass-catching specialist at the running back position, Theo Riddick, was signed by the Raiders, it gave me great joy because I was able to launch directly into a full troll campaign against Andy, who had just made Josh Jacobs his my guy, which a lot of the reason for being in all in Josh Jacobs is that his pass catching should go up. So, But we need to talk about this. It's very easy to say, I'm going to ignore Theo Riddick completely. He has no impact. But here's the thing. This is just another signing. This isn't the first. So on this team, so you, they already had Josh Jacobs. They drafted Lynn Bowden Jr., who was a converted wide receiver, which to me says that guy's got decent hands for a running back. They re-signed Jalen Richard. If you don't remember this, they had already added Devonta Booker, who, <laughs> who has been used as a pass-catching specialist. They add Theo Riddick. Jason, are you shook? At all? Do you have any trembling going on for Josh Jacobs? I am not shook. I am not worried You're about not Riddick. And I, the, the reality is this. What you just described says that they definitely want to, in, in my opinion, I believe they want to get their running back more involved in the passing game. They're bringing in uh, passing down backs. Now, the question is, if that's true, 
Who is it? Is it Josh Jacobs or is it this hodgepodge of third down specialists? And that is obviously to be determined. But, do you know, if I had to bet, if you said, hey, here's a Benjamin, it's yours. You can double it or lose it. You've got to bet on does Theo Riddick make the roster for week one. I probably bet against it. Sure. I mean, maybe I, but it's close. My point is. This is just a signing that worries people from a pass catching side. Josh Jacobs is a better pass catching back than whoever is on the roster. I mean, Theo Riddick's been great, but he's 29 years old. We haven't seen him since 2018. And when we did see him, he seems like he had lost a step then. So my my take on it is I don't think you can completely ignore the fact that the Raiders have added a bunch of depth. Now, for pass catching running backs, not all of these guys are going to make the team. They won't all be on the roster when, when the kickoff actually happens. I don't know who will be. Uh, I do side more on that. Josh Jacobs should be drafted where you were drafting him. Like this, it's not changing that for me, but you got to pay attention. Pay attention in we, camp. Yeah, we we can't forget though. You know, you talk about okay, they add Lynn Bowden Jr., but uh, you know he's he's a rookie. They bring in Theo Riddick, who hasn't done anything in, in the last couple of years, but they also lost DeAndre Washington, who was a 40 target back last year. So right. it's not, it's not just last year, plus a bunch of running backs minus nobody. So, you know, if, if we're, if we're talking about the Theo Riddicks, we got to talk about the DeAndre Washington side. Sure. You can follow the show on Twitter at the FF ballers. You can follow Jason there at Jason FFL. I am at FF hitman. Andy is at Andy Holloway. Instagram, our personals are exactly the same, but over on Instagram, it's Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. And on the YouTube, if you want to watch the weirdness that is taking place right now, while Jason uh quite ironically drinks out of his weirdo mug because <laughs> this is the life we're living in. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Please subscribe over there. Click the bell. We got a lot of news and notes, so let's get into it. News and notes from around the league. All right, it's training camp time, which means that most of this news will not be of the positive nature because it's going to be injury related, but we will do our best to maintain a cheery disposition and figure out what to do with this information. Yeah, you should really give every note here as just real great news well, it's, just, i'm not pretending it's good i just it, i don't but a cheery disposition <laughs> and guess what guess what lions rookie deandre swift oh. suffered a leg injury at thursday's practice oh man that's a cheery disposition so the lions running back situation is very bizarre uh, there was you know the note that carry on johnson when he came back he was wearing the knee brace we have since been updated on that information and it's carry on johnson is making the decision to play in the brace now, it, which to me is like this is perfectly fine. We've seen players decide I have to wear a brace. You have players who who say I need to get out of this thing immediately. It's it's hampering me. But if Carryon Johnson actually feels more secure in his knee with the knee brace on, I, I think it's a positive thing. When that first report came out, I had already known at that. I did not know that he needed to come out and re-clarify. But I, when when I first saw that he was in the brace, it was somewhat common knowledge that he is choosing to wear the brace. He's not injured. He's choosing to wear the brace and will continue to wear the brace. That's just how he wants to be. And I, I don't know that that's great news from a mental standpoint, that a player feels more comfortable wearing the brace than without. But it is great news in the sense that, He's not injured. He's not wearing a brace because of an injury. He's, I mean, he's wearing it because of a right. former injury, but not because of a current injury, and we have seen that before. Dallas Goddard, Eagles tight end, second backup tight end, starting tight end. Who knows with Dallas Goddard these days? Uh, he suffered a hairline fracture in one of his thumbs, so you'll have to monitor that situation. The Eagles' pass-catching options keep, ping-ponging all over where it was reported Greg Ward is the current target leader then the Jalen Rager hype was jumping on the back of a dragon yet again Jay do you have have you made any movements to the Eagles pass catchers um I have been rising on and before this news I've been rising on Zach Ertz just realizing that every year 
He's undervalued. And every year we say, well, it's got to take this, that, or the other for him to have that many targets again. And every year, it this, that, or the other happens. He's the new depth right. chart assassin. Oh, no. You know, oh, <laughs> D- DJX goes down. Oh, uh, Alshon's not ready. Now, oh. now Dallas Goddard has a, you know, we don't know if he's going to have surgery. I don't, I think he's going to be able to avoid it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I do, I am more confident as we approach draft season in taking Zach Ertz right next to Mark uh, Andrews. All right. 49ers rookie wide receiver. Rookie? Rookie Ooh, <laughs> wide that was receiver. A, that's a tough one. Brandon Ayuk. Ayukin left practice early, suffering an apparent hamstring injury. The tone when this came through was not positive. It was showing great concern for the rookie who was – it sounded like he was taking over camp. He was establishing himself as the man for the 49ers. They're already dealing with a with an injury to last year's breakout rookie, Debo Samuel. The depth chart for the wide receiver position is now wide open if Ayuk is going to miss time. My take on this is Kendrick Bourne is a player who is not named very frequently for fantasy purposes. But he is the one to watch at the wide receiver position. Of of course, George Kittle is the man in San Francisco. But if you're looking for now we're a, a late round chance from the San Francisco wide receivers, to me it's Kendrick Bourne. Jay, do you are are you in on that at all, or is it just I I'm not going to draft anybody from there? I I'm not really in on that. I don't know if it's I'm not drafting anybody. You know, if if I'm late in a draft and. I'm looking for some kind of PPR reliable depth. I do think Trent Taylor is someone that can be involved. Uh, But, I mean, we joked about this on Slack. But if the world of 2020 (laughs) continues, we could see Dante Pettis (laughs) be the the surprise guy. So, because there's Pettis and Bourne and Trent Taylor, I'm, I'm pretty much not looking for any of them. And don't forget, I know this is another crazy name to throw out there, but they did also sign Jordan Reed. And I think That's it would very have taken point. It would have taken a loss of a few receiving options for him to actually get put into the scheme, but they have lost a few receiving options. So this is George Kittle and bust to me. I like the Jordan Reed take. Rams head coach Sean. Of course, of course you do. <laughs> oh, did you say something good about Jordan Reed? I'm in. That's on brand, Mike. Look, I, he's good, man. When he's on he, the field, he he's is. good. Rule 86. Uh, uh, out of the Rams, running back Daryl Henderson suffered a mild hamstring injury. The team hopes to have him back for week one. But this, this, is, this is interesting because it, Look, it gives Cam Akers just that more, much more opportunity to establish himself as the number one running back in this offense. I believe we all were on the side leaning that Akers would take over the job after they they spent a day two pick on him. Are you? What are your? What are the birds telling you, Jason? Are you uh, looking at Akers? Did you move him up a couple spots? Malcolm Brown, his he has been getting some play with the ones as well. Do you have? Uh, any clarity on the Rams' backfield? <laughs> well, first, Malcolm Brown is so incredibly disrespected by fantasy. I mean, he's undrafted. You can go to like 25-round leagues, he's undrafted, which makes no sense because he will touch the ball. He will be in the offense. But I, I get it. We're looking for the upside. We're looking for the the league winner or at least the weekly starter. And this is great news for Cam Akers. Um, you know, sometimes it takes an injury ahead of you to give confidence for fantasy purposes that you are going to, as a rookie, get first team reps and get in, uh, you know, through training camp. That's what happened for Clyde Edwards Alaire to vault so high. And if Cam Akers is now soaking up first team reps and getting that experience, it just means that if he were to take over as the main guy in this backfield, it could happen much earlier. In fact, if if Henderson isn't ready for week one, right, you could see something big that doesn't go away. So I and I, we're all big fans of Cam Akers talent. Uh he was, you know, after Clyde Edwards Alaire, he was actually the higher running back for my rookies ahead of Jonathan Taylor when I uh, initially made my rankings and and this I think could put him back in that spot. Chargers wide receiver Mike Williams has been diagnosed with a shoulder sprain. He is considered week to week. This is actually positive news because when the injury 
initially happened, there was great concern that his collarbone would be broken. The reports are that it is intact. So we'll see what happens with Mike Williams. Does this change anything for you, Jay, for early season? Does Keenan Allen get more targets? Are you more comfortable going in on Hunter Henry as one of the mid to later mid to late round tight end picks? I mean, look, if Mike Williams is not there week one, this is going to mean more targets for Keenan Allen and Hunter Henry. I'm not changing my draft strategy, though, uh, okay. outside of saying – I'm no longer drafting Mike Williams because there's a, a very realistic chance he's not there week one. And I'm not going to draft a Mike Williams that I can't even find out week one if he breaks out unless it's a best ball league. He's off my board, but I'm not adjusting the other two, even though they could have a small bump for a week or two. Some good news here. Andy Reid, head coach for the Kansas City Chiefs, he has confirmed that uh, Tyreek Hill will return to practice in a few days. Sammy Watkins, the Lizard King himself, he also ah. <laughs> returned to practice uh, from the groin injury. And Nick Chubb, running back for the Cleveland Browns. He has cleared the concussion protocol. He will return to practice. Melvin Gordon also returned to practice. Uh, so, look, Jay, we found so, it. Yes. We, we're, we're on a stretch here. But then we got to bring this one up. Colts tight oh. end Jack Doyle. He has been sidelined with a neck injury. We'll We'll see about that. I have been I have yes, been you, you know it. <laughs> I have been one thousand percent out on the possibility of Trey Burton like a dummy <laughs> making any kind of noise for this offense. But uh through a matter of happenstance, Trey Burton has been taking the reps with the ones because the the Colts they did just reactivate Mo Alley Cox, aka Gigantor from the active PUP list, but <sighs> Trey Burton might be a thing. He very he well might, might be, be a thing. thing. I don't know. He could be a top ten tight end. I mean, oh I, no, because it takes because it takes nothing. Right. If he ends up with six touchdowns, he could have that. But I do think he's going to be utilized in that pass catching role. He's been with Frank Reich before. He is healthy. I mean, that's the thing. Is It was like, well, he wasn't even healthy when he signed, and so he's injured. He's just a backup guy that's not going to be used. He's washed. None of that makes sense. He's actually a healthy human being playing football for this team, running with ones. He has a history with the head coach. The you know All the Jack Doyle love because of Phillip Rivers also applies to Trey Burton. <clears throat> I still have Jack Doyle head. I haven't, I haven't changed anything in my rankings based on this current Jack Doyle injury, but I still have Jack Doyle and Trey Burton only four spots away from each other in my rankings, and I think most people are 20 oh spots apart. That is ridiculous. Uh, there is a little bit of hype here for running back, Washington running back, Bryce Love. Look, you know mm, that I'm an... How does that make you feel, I'm an Mike? Antonio Gibson truther, but I am also a fair journalistic reporter bringing you the news. Head coach Ron Rivera uh, gushing that Bryce Love can be an every down back. I will say I was following Washington's, uh, the beat reporters out of Washington of talking about practice today. I didn't see anything about Bryce Love in there. They were talking about Antonio Gibson's running with the ones or getting, sharing time with the ones. He's, he's not the... The, the only guy there talking about J.D. McKissick and Antonio Gibson on the field at the exact same time for Washington. So, look, it's wild. It, you can take your shot here, who you think is going to break out from Washington. I think it's – I do believe it is a smart decision for fantasy to grab one of these players. It's going to be Antonio Gibson for me. I don't mind at all if you want to take the chance on Bryce Love. Bryce Love is, is uh, the draft – the draft uh, cost is much, much lower on Bryce Love. Jay, do you have a, uh, an inkling which way you're going if you're if you're taking one of the guys from Washington? Yeah, I, I, I do completely agree with you that it is worth taking someone here if you're looking for a home run pick. I believe the chances are still on the Antonio Gibson side to actually succeed. That's the guy that this regime drafted right. and that's the guy who when you when you're not talking about coach speak, but what happened during training camp as far as beat reporters saying this guy did X, Y, or Z, you keep hearing about Gibson busting off touchdown runs in camp. I haven't heard anybody saying Bryce Love has just been electric, but the coaches saying he could 
I mean, I will I will say this on the beat reporter side, Bryce Love is you know often running ahead of of Gibson. So I have no problem if someone wants to take a shot very late. It costs you nothing. Bryce Love is pretty much undrafted right now. Uh, you know that's that's fine. Here's who I'm not taking. I'm not taking the presumed starter. I'm not mm. drafting Adrian Peterson, who I think if we had to put odds on who has the most fantasy points at the end of the year from this group, the highest odds is Adrian Peterson. But that doesn't really matter for fantasy if you know if it's a guy that is every week the running back 18, 19, and by the end of the season ends up with a good total, but didn't really help you on a week to week basis. Right. Right. Uh, I, I, so I would avoid personally, I would avoid Adrian Peterson, but if you want a plotting guy, who's going to get a lot of touches, uh, then he's your man. Well, he might, I mean, that remains to be seen of the way that Rivera and Scott Turner have ran an offense in recent history. The, the, we'll, we'll see how many carries Adrian Peterson can actually get if they're throwing the ball way more. But like we said, nebulous situation, but that's where you want to take your chances because that's where a breakout running back can come from. Before we get into the mailbag, this episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. When guys are confident, they don't settle for anything less than 100. Jason, I'm talking to you, my friend. Oh, I know to 100. I know that you don't accept anything less than 100. I'm not about that 99 life. Well, look, yeah, 90, 99 is for second place, my friend. First place, take it up to 100. And head and shoulders, they give you up to 100% dandruff protection. You don't want those flakes on your shoulders. You're looking like a looking like a 87 when you can take it up to mm. 100 with head and shoulders. Look, use it regularly. You can prevent up to 100% of visible flakes and get the hair that looks 100% Amazing head and shoulders. They've got your back. And look, you can take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders. Available online at walmart.com and at Walmart stores. Pick yours up to date. Jason, I know you got, I know you care about that hair, man. You got to get that head and shoulders life. Live it. Yeah, I'm all about that. Taking it to 100 life with head and shoulders. Absolutely. Uh, here's the thing, Foot Clan. Uh, if you are in the market for a home security company, you probably know the deal that most of them trap you with high prices and stupid contracts, yes. bad customer service. Simply Safe is who we use. We use them before they were a sponsor. They've sponsored us for a long time. They're a supporter of the show. But here's the most important part. They're actually just a really great home security company. Uh, they have everything you need to protect your home. No drawbacks of the traditional home security all the sensors, cameras, everything to blanket your rooms, your windows, your doors, tailored specifically for your home. They monitor day and night, ready to send police, fire, medical, whatever. If there's an emergency, they've got you covered. And you could set it up yourself in under an hour. You just peel and stick the sensors. It's it's basically the modern day version of home security, not your grandfather's old busted Yeah, get version. out of there. And it starts at $15 a month with no contract, no pushy sales guys, no hidden fees, no fine print. Try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You get free shipping and a 60 day risk free trial. There's nothing to lose. Simplysafe.com slash footballers. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh. Mailbag time. Jason, are you ready for the mailbag? I've never been more ready. <laughs> it's a little little call and response there. Yeah. I like it. All right, let's get into a voicemail. What's going on, fantasy footballers? I'm a big fan. Seven overall pick, full PPR. Devontae Adams or Derrick Henry? Appreciate you. All right. Oh. 107. Full PPR. Full PPR. Do you take the uh, – the, uh, <laughs> Look, the outlier, Derrick Henry, the man who gets it done for fantasy purposes without a huge pass-catching resume, or do you lean in to point every time Devontae Adams catches the ball because it's going to be a lot this season. Jay, you're on the clock, 107 PPR. Who are you drafting? See, I I know who I'm drafting, but I feel bad about it. Um, I, I think that 
That's strange. You shouldn't feel bad about your first round pick. Well, I feel bad about my answer to this question. I don't feel bad about my first round selection. My point is, in a full PPR, Devontae Adams, I mean, he could he could very like the absurd rare, you know, almost never happened before type of 200 targets in a season, that kind of an outlandish number that would be fantasy gold isn't good enough. Uh, That would be whatever they were mining on on Pandora um, in (laughs) Avatar. That's the substance that the 200 targets brings. Um, But the reality is people remember Avatar. Well, yeah, I mean, I know there's like like a thousand sequels coming out, but people remember Avatar. Well, apparently I do. I mean, you could have gone with like vibranium, and then I would have been all over it. But uh, instead, yeah, you're sure. like, you Ava- I don't know what they're mining in Avatar. <laughs> okay, so it's a little bit old <laughs> reference, but just Come wait on, a couple of years, and when when all of the Avatar movies come back out, you'll be like, that reference is hot. <laughs> uh, even though I don't remember the uh, name of the mineral. Anyways, my point is, Adams is great, but I've talked about this a lot. I really love the wide receivers that are available in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round, and I hate the running backs there, and I I believe that Derrick Henry is phenomenal. He's worthy of a top pick. He, you know, sure, maybe he needs 18 total touchdowns to be a star, but he very well could have 18 plus total touchdowns. So I'm going to take the running back there if it's my team, but I do feel like, the safest pick is Devonte Adams. Where, where do you, if you're in a full PPR oh. and you're on the clock, and those are the two players you're choosing between, which way do you go? I I believe I'm going with if those are the two players I'm choosing between. I do believe that I'm going to go with Devonte Adams, uh, because in PPR he is elite. He he's he's top tier for me, and I'm going to get a. I'm still going to get a great running back. On the on the way back, who he may not be in the class of Derrick Henry, but I believe that the point separation of starting with Devontae Adams is where I would actually go. We have an update, Jason. Oh, it was in fact called Unobtainium. I forgot yeah. oh how my gosh, stupid what a dumb the name. name. <laughs> <laughs> I did remember. I will say this: what I remembered about it was that it was a really stupid name. Mr. It's Unobtainium, Mr. Cameron. This mineral Ouch. is we it's unobtainable. What should we call it? Yes. Mm, exactly. <laughs> what is Unobtainium. Unobtainium. It says how difficult it is to collect this mineral. And I, love I can the give movie. backstory with with no exposition. <laughs> Look, Ridiculous. you know that the value is set immediately. This is not zinc. What's zinc worth? I don't know. Unobtainium. Holy crap. That's valuable. All right, moving on. This question is from Instagram from Piano Paul. Would you trade Camara for Clyde Edwards Alaire in a half point dynasty? Saints running back Camara, brand new rookie Chiefs running back Clyde Edwards Alaire. Who would you rather have? Well, my answer changed with the last word because uh, I'm I'm you know I've been in drafts. I'm taking Alvin Camara ahead of Clyde Edwards Alaire. Hmm. But not in a dynasty. Okay. If this is a dynasty league where you can, uh, I mean, if in a redraft, you can make the argument that you can take or that you should take Clyde Edwards Alaire over Alvin Kamara. I don't think you should. I'm taking Kamara, but the argument at least exists. The floor and the ceiling are very similar for both of these players. Um, I trust what Kamara has already shown in the NFL, and I trust his touchdown prowess. But now if you're talking about, okay, Alvin Kamara is going to be a free agent here. Um, where's where's he playing? Is he playing for the Saints? Is Breeze there? Is he changing teams? Is he? Uh, do they have to bring someone else in? I mean, the, I don't know, but here's what I do know. Clyde Edwards-Alaire is on the best offense for the next, I'm going to say 10 years because that's how long Pat Mahomes is under contract. And that doesn't mean... Clyde Edwards Alaire is going to be great for 10 years. Say, uh, Clyde Edwards, back. I mean, he was a first round pick. So you're talking the, at five years is the expectation from the team. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly getting Clyde Edwards, Clyde Edwards Alaire for sure. All right. Off of Instagram, Keeper League. This is from Hunter Saffle. 
Keeper League, Jason, Kyler Murray in the 13th or DJ Chark, Chark Wing Duck in the 7th. Mm. So tremendous, well, here- tremendous value on Kyler Murray or it, um, also on DJ Chark, but... Kyler Murray, we we are, and everyone should know, Foot Clan, we have a big lineup of shows this week. We're going to be talking breakouts, busts, value sleepers, all those really fun to talk about players. And in the breakouts, these are two guys that could be discussed. Kyler Murray, DJ Chark, they're awesome. Um, I think Kyler Murray does break out, but DJ Chark in the seventh, that's not a huge value on him. It's, you know, it's a round Maybe by the time draft season comes, if we've pushed his value up higher, uh, maybe it's two rounds of value, not near what the value is on Kyler Murray, but I'm still going to take the wide receiver over the quarterback because right. I can replace Kyler. What, are, are you doing the same or are you taking the immense value on Kyler? That is rough. My belief in Kyler Murray breaking out, I even projected as my number three quarterback. All the signs are there for for him to take the next step it is that is very difficult to pass man the last two years fantasy you know if you've gotten the late round superstar quarterback it's been awesome yeah it which is and you can't do that with kyler because he's not a late round quarterback so i was going to say this is the bizarre scenario where you actually can draft kyler murray where people were able to draft lamar uh jackson last year uh man I'm I'm probably still going to stick with DJ I'm switching. Chark. You're I'm going switching. no, no, no. <laughs> no. I I I am switching, and, oh, and no. we we talked ourselves to the reality that you could take the chance on Kyler. If you want DJ Chark, instead of getting him for the sixth, draft him. Draft him in the you're in the seventh. Draft him in the sixth. Uh, pull, pull the trigger a little early if if you really want him. You can't. Uh, even though you can find plenty of other quarterbacks in the thirteenth round that are fine for your team, you can't really find a quarterback in that range that has the probability of the massive step forward. I mean, you could hope that if you're taking Matthew Stafford, he does what he right. did the first half of last year. But, I mean, we've seen Matthew Stafford for many, many, many years, and he's never had a season that was just 16 games of the first half of last year. I don't know why we would think that would happen in, you know, whatever this is, year seven, year eight. Next question It's off of the website. Jason, the guy that you are obsessed with, Miles Sanders. PPR running back, Rusty wants to know, I can keep either Miles Sanders or Aaron Jones. Now you've talked about being risk adverse with Miles Sanders simply because the other running backs in that range are fantastic and we're not sure what's going on with the Miles Sanders injury. I don't I don't have any updates. Perhaps you have an, an update on Miles. But you, no, I, you've tempered on Aaron Jones, so which guy are you going to keep? Yeah, I, I haven't seen an update. I don't think we'll get an update until he's back out there. We just know he's week to week, and nobody seems concerned. You've brought up they're not making any transactions. The team really, truly does not seem um, concerned. I would, I would, would, A red flag would go up if they go and sign another running back right now, which they have not done. Uh, this is an easy Miles Sanders pick to me. Okay. While I... I do love Aaron Jones's talent. He's a he's a tier below. So I'm not, you know, if if I'm looking at Miles Sanders or or Kenyon Drake, two guys that I love that are going near each other in a draft, I'm going to go with Drake, but there are too many worries with Aaron Jones on the touchdown regression on AJ Dillon, aka AJ Villain, uh that Thank you. Um <laughs> That concern me, so I'm I'm taking Miles Sanders here. I'm taking Miles Sanders. I think <laughs> I'm very confident, dude. I'm because I'm I don't know what to do with Aaron Jones. I was so confident for so long, and then the glutes and the hamstrings and the quads they're infecting me, Jason. And I don't know what to do about it. Yeah, I mean, here's a, here's the thing: the Green Bay Packers offense could sputter just in general i mean we we saw the worries when Devonte adams went down and practice but aaron jones day. is good he's so yes good. aaron jones is good but if the offense as a whole is average and they're not scoring just as a team as many touchdowns as they were before and the five yard in goal line opportunities go to villain then it's you know it's gonna be because andy brought this up on a, on a recent show i think maybe it was our live event on friday the fact that 
Aaron Jones was, you know, a top three running back last year and had the, what was it, 18, 19 touchdowns? It was unbelievable. And with all of that, he had so many bus games that hurt you in fantasy. Sure. He had complete disappearing acts that you don't usually see from a top six fantasy running back. Now, if you dial some of that other stuff back, but you still have the volatility, I, I want a guy in Miles Sanders who has the chance to get 320 touches and just be consistent. And his bad weeks for my fantasy roster, yeah, they're, they're fine. He caught four balls, point, 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 <laughs> and, you know, had enough yards. He just was meh, and he's, you know, the running back 16 on his down week versus running back 50 on his down week. I checked with the computer because I couldn't do it myself, and you are correct. We're going with Miles Sanders. From YouTube, Brian wants to know, how do you guys feel about running back Chris Thompson? I think he has a chance to return some solid fantasy value in Jacksonville, especially as the team passing downs back. Jay, what's your temperature check on Chris Thompson right now? Chris Thompson is a uh, is a wonderful, super late last round pick, especially, not especially, only in PPR or half PPR leagues. He has never been able to stay healthy, but when he's been out there, he has been a valuable fantasy asset you know, a lot's been made about uh, how much Leonard Fournette caught the ball last year, or I guess better to be said, how much he was targeted. He did sure. Not, well, he, he, caught, he, was, he caught the ball. Yeah, but he was so inefficient with his receiving work. But the point is that the Jaguars and Gardner Minshew threw the ball to the running back. So, they're I mean, that's going to happen this year. They're not going to abandon that. They're going to keep throwing the ball and checking it down. Now, maybe it's all Leonard Fournette again, but maybe Jay Gruden, who brought over his favorite pass catching back, is going to, I don't know, use the guy he brought over, so it's, who is super efficient at that task. Yes, Chris Thompson is an incredible pass catching running back. Jason, over his time in Washington, since, you know his third year, that's when he actually really started to play. Since then, he has averaged... Oh, 55 targets, even with all those games missed. 55 yeah. targets. Yes, I agree with Jason that I think that Chris Thompson is an excellent late round PPR running back. And if he is the, to me, I, I know it's wild, but he is the biggest pause for Leonard drafting Leonard Fournette early because Leonard Fournette needs those targets, man, he needs the opportunity. All right, this next question is from Ella off of YouTube. Who is more likely to finish as a top 10 quarterback, Drew Locke or Joe Burrow? Oh, this is interesting. Yes. Um, man, what a, what, a, what a fascinating question. So I'm glad this question was brought up. If you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen me talk about this this weekend. Not sure if you're aware, Mike. Since we I, I, been in the I studio together. believe I know what you're talking about. Of I was I was calling you out on Jerry Judy uh, in the office of you saying I you believe in Jerry Judy. You fully believe in the talent, and I have no problem with that take at all. And you you feel like he is going to be excellent in the NFL. And I said, okay, well let's do this algebra here. Jerry Judy, if you believe that he is going to be great in the NFL. Add that to Cortland Sutton, who is great in the NFL. He is uh, he broke out last year. A plus B. Now, now, now it's not just a quarterback sustaining one excellent fantasy wide receiver. He is sustaining two, giving him some intrinsic value. What are the what are the results from your Drew Lock deep dive? Yeah, so I went this weekend and I watched the film because I'll be honest. I didn't really remember, you know, that it was the end of the season. He played only five games and we're watching all these games at once. And so I don't feel like I had a, he was a winner, Jason. That's what he was. Yes. Four and one. I'm aware of that ties the franchise record for most wins by a rookie quarterback. Oh, I didn't ties know it with that. John Elway. Um, I did not know that as well until I was watching the film and the commentators were talking about it, but, um, I was impressed. I was impressed by drew Locke, not in a way that I said, what a star, but definitely in a way where I said, this guy's capable of getting great weapons, the ball. He is absolutely, he's got a, he's got a rocket arm. Um, he's not afraid to go for, uh, you know, the, the go for a really big play. 
Um, and he's mobile. He can get out of the pocket. Now, to to circle back to the original question, though, about him versus Joe Burrow and who is more likely to finish as a top 10 quarterback, I see Drew Locke as someone who is still going to be a little bit leashed. He will be utilized to get his great weapons the ball. I think he'll succeed there. Um, you know, I've got him over 4,000 yards and 25 touchdowns. That's a solid season. But to get to be top 10, you have to dominate. You have to truly go out there and have a ton of rushing yards or a ton of touchdowns. And if I had to pick one, I the, the film on Joe Burrow, they both have – both of these quarterbacks have great weapons, but the rushing ability, while Drew Locke does have some, I think people really severely underestimate how much Joe Burrow ran the ball in college, how much was designed, how much he picked up on each run. Uh, his, his rushing ability is is even better than Drew Locke's. So I'm going to take Joe Burrow as far as who has the higher ceiling for a true breakout, even, even in his rookie season. I would take – Goodness gracious! I will take uh, I'll take Drew Locke here. AJ Green not practicing again, <laughs> still not practicing. And when you say again, Mike, are you saying like this year yeah. as well as <laughs> last year? And just just pour it on, pour it on okay. the old man. Ridiculous! I hope you're listening, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Very important question from Jared on the website. Would you be able to accept any of your kids becoming fans of a football team not named the Arizona Cardinals? Well, yes and no. Um, I look. I, I mean, we we <laughs> dealt with this this last year. My my youngest Isaac, for some reason, said he is a 49ers fan, and, he, and the some reason is probably because they went to the Super Bowl, and you you know you get a lot of publicity. Forty Niners. And so what I've what I have concluded, what I've told my children is Gross. look, they they do not have to love the Arizona Cardinals. That's that they're their own man. They're gonna grow up and they're gonna make their own choices. I'll try to guide them to good decisions, but ultimately they're going to have to now, is learn how to a make Cardinal their own decisions. Fan a good decision? Exactly. I'm gonna <laughs> I want to teach them how to make good decisions, but they can come up with the answers in their life. So I told them they can they don't have to be a Cardinals fan, they could be a fan of anybody not in the NFC West. Yeah. But I will not stand for them to pick the Niners or the Seahawks or the Rams. That's just illegal. Yeah. It's out I've, of bounds. I I've dealt with it as well. My boy who's into football, he picked up on the he was a big Broncos fan for a while. Oh, what a great what a great uh conference that is. Yes. I mean I, I allowed it to happen. I we're we're getting him there. I think we are getting him there. But the uh, unfortunately, the problem is he loves for our Lamar children. Jackson. Like he's all in on Lamar Jackson, which like, it's not unfortunate to be in on him. But he's now a, a massive Ravens fan. So yeah. hey, that's great. You yeah. gotta have a you gotta have a fan in each uh, conference. <laughs> um, the the issue with our children being Arizona Cardinals fans and why the why both of us have the experience of them picking other teams is because they're young, and the last few years the Arizona Cardinals have just. <laughs> Fair. Uh, hard to root for. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, just a couple more questions before we wrap up the show. From YouTube, yo, 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 yo. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Keep trade cut. Alexander okay. Madison, Tony Pollard, Boston Scott. Now, let, let's go. It, I think this is a, a interesting place to jump in with this information uh, because I, I wasn't sure how to take it. Adam Schefter said if – and this is just him speaking personally. If Dalvin Cook doesn't have a contract before the season starts, a new a contract extension, Schefter is, is saying he will have hesitation to draft him in fantasy football. Schefter is a big fantasy football player. He's also a big time big wig reporter getting all the news. Do you does this, this is does based this, go ahead, Jay. This this is based on the new CBA. Uh, there were all the reports that Dalvin Cook was going to hold out, uh, that he was not going to He said to get it's not camp. true. Well, sure. Uh, but there were a lot of people around him, near him, saying that he was going to hold out. Now, he didn't. But then the CBA makes it to where you can't really hold out a camp or it, or you're going to lose so much money that it's not worth – I mean, you're, the only reason you're holding out is to get more money. 
So if now it guarantees you less money, you don't do that. But the change here, and I do think we will see this. I don't think it's going to come from Dalvin Cook, but I do think we will see a player in the future as the as players are adapting to this new CBA. The, the power goes back to the player as soon as the season kicks off. Hmm. So they could be there for camp and then hold out from the actual games just like they used to be able to hold out. And I think that is what, Schefter's basing his fear on is that the power goes back to the player as soon as the ball is kicked. If they want to hold out, that's when they'll do it. And so he has worry because he'll have the ability to do it then. But Dalvin Cook has been talking about week one about Le'Veon playing. Le'Veon Bell the, talked about it too. Sure, but Le'Veon Bell was not talking about it while he was in camp. In camp. Okay, so fair. Uh, th that's that's a wide difference to me. Uh, Le'Veon Bell was, you know, saying all the things he could to get his contract. Dalvin, they've broken off contract negotiations, and Dalvin is still there, still saying he's focused on week one. So back to the question, Madison, Tony. Boston Scott, Tony Pollard, correct? Keep trade cut. So you've got two guys here that presumably are not going to do much without an injury to the starter in Alexander Madison with Dalvin Cook and Tony Pollard behind Ezekiel Elliott. Boston Scott seems like uh, a low upside but high floor PPR guy who will be involved in the offense no matter what. But I'm going to cut him. <laughs> Sorry, Boston. Um, I, I think your low upside, I would rather have Madison or Pollard. And I think you've got to go Madison due to not just the contract issue, but also the injury history of Dalvin Cook and the higher probability that Madison has to start games over Tony Pollard. So I'm going to trade Pollard. What, how, I, see it, the, I see it the exact same way. Alexander Madison is the long-term uh, hold here. You just We don't know. We don't know if Dalvin Cook is going to be back or not. But if Dalvin Cook moves on to a different team, Alexander Madison will be the starter for the Minnesota Vikings and will – It'll, it'll be fun to talk about him next offseason. All right, Jay, we're going to get you out of here on this one. This is a – this is brutal. This is absolutely oh, no. brutal for me here because this is off of YouTube. We have a half-point PPR question. Terry McLaurin or DJ Chark? Greetings <laughs> from Brazil. Wow. I see why that's brutal for you. These are, these are my two guys. my guys. Uh, all right, DJ Chark or Terry McLaurin. You could argue both have I abstain. quarterback. <laughs> okay, well, let me tell you who you should draft between those two guys. Is DJ Chark. We've seen a little bit more on the NFL field from Chark than Terry McLaurin. I believe that the Jaguars will score more points than the Washington football team this year. Uh, I think Gardner Minshew is a better quarterback, at least for fantasy purposes, uh, than Dwayne Haskins. And we saw Chark be a top 10 wide receiver before his injury last season. He's coming into year three. I mean, look, obviously we all like both of these players, mm -hmm. but I'm going to take Chark ahead of McLaurin. Whew. I don't know, man. Get them both. That's my, my recommendation is they are both excellent candidates for massive breakouts this year. Want to thank Pristine Auction. You Look, pristineauction.com, that's where we get all our sports memorabilia. And got a feature. Look, they have they, they have things for everybody, for every budget. You want to get a Blake Jarwin jersey for like 20 bucks? I did it. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. But they also have elite Oof. item auctions talking like a signed Marshawn Lynch throwback on field helmet a an Aaron Rodgers signed wow. Packers full size helmet they have they got everything that you want they have legit legit stuff over there pristineauction.com use the reg registration code ballers and you're going to get a $10 credit off your first purchase <laughs> Jason we made it Yo. barely we made it through the weirdness we can celebrate that we did it we will see you tomorrow foot clan like Jason said sleepers breakouts, busts, values. We're getting into the nitty-gritty, everybody. The drafts are coming. UltimateDraftKit.com. Do not forget about it. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Don't forget, Simply Safe's got everything you need to protect your home with none of the drawbacks of traditional home security. You can set it up yourself in under an hour, no technician needed. There's no contract, no pushy sales guys, none of that crap. And it starts at $15 a month. Try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. Free shipping, 60-day risk-free trial. There's nothing to lose.